buzzers. So it's just, I don't want to have to try and guess which one went where afterwards. Okay, so next is to get this off. I've actually unplugged my oil sensor. That's just in there. You do need to take the oil sensor off your cover, but I can't quite get in there properly, so I'm going to take the cover off and then I'm going to get this off and put it on the new one. So using cloth, rub the mallet, couple of taps. See if we can get this to loosen off. I'm going to break the seal on it. be careful of that oil sensor while I'm doing the tapping because I do want to keep that and there's nothing actually wrong with this cover so I will be keeping it for spares see this bike's done 90,000 K so I dare say she's pretty well fused on there turn you off, get this off, and then come back. Okay, it was only a few more taps, so she's starting to come now. I'm just bring this out a little bit further. There, there she goes. There we go, looking at the belly of the beast. So it's a good idea to keep the oil fan here. That's how she looks inside. So here we've got our pressure plate. We've got all of our plates in there and they are looking a little bit grimy so it's probably a good idea that I'm doing this. Okay, so oil sensor, you can see that there. I don't want to tick that oil over every heap. That little guy there, we've got to take him off because we're going to have to put him on the new one. So onwards and upwards. Next, just take out all of these, gently take all of this out. And you can start changing things around. So the instructions that I've been told to pay close attention to, you've got an arrow that's on this plate just here. You've got to pay attention to where that arrow is. And once we actually take these out, there's going to be a little notch underneath. And when we put everything back, that arrow must meet that notch. So I'm going to, and I recommend that if you do this yourself, take as many photos or as I am, video it, because then you've got something to come back to. So... I've got the right size Allen key already. Let me just bring you in closer here. And get you off the stand. That's how it all looks up inside your clutch. Pretty neat. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so I will be speeding this video up, guys. What I'm doing is I'm just taking out the springs. And I am changing the springs, but I'll be using the same bolts, but I'll be changing the springs and the end caps. So I'm just sitting them all there nice and carefully. So if you were going to reuse, just make sure you put everything somewhere safe. And it's a good idea to always, even if you put the pattern that you're putting it down as the pattern that you pulled them out of, it's just a good idea to put everything back where it was. Don't try and mix things up. Right, so the last two don't want to come out. They want to say that they're in there real tight. I'm trying to hold the clutch plates from spinning so I can just get enough purchase to crack it. I've not been very successful at it. What I might do, I'll pause you guys, and go and get some tools. Okay, so different tools. So what I did is I went and got one of these, I have been using one of these, um, but it's longer and it does allow things to turn more. It's just a little bit shorter. I've put it in, still didn't want to budge, so I got my rubber mallet and just tapped it a couple of times, just in order to crack. And that got this one. So I'll see if I can replicate it with this one and not stuff that up. So she still doesn't want to go. A couple of taps. 
watch your fingers. That was the crack. And there we go. So that is a good way if you've got a cap head, um, which is the little bolts that have the space for the Allen keys, cap heads. Um, if they're a bit tight, rather than trying to round it, because the last thing I want to do is round any of these bolts, is just get it in there and then, whoop, that one sprung out. Small tap with a rubber mallet will just help break it. All you want to do is just break that bond or that seal that's on there. So I will probably fast this video up again and keep going and get these last two out now that I've got them cracked. And that's why there was so much pressure on there is because it was ready to pop out. Okay. Now, I see my arrow. I will take out my pressure plate. And this has a bearing in it that we have to try and get out. That's going to be fun. I've seen a few YouTube videos that says it's really hard to get out. Guess what? It just fell out. So... I'm really glad for that. That was actually the part that was worrying me because I've seen four or five YouTube videos where they said it was a absolute pain in the ass to get this out. So the fact that it fell out, I guess for a little part, I'm a little worried why did it fall out like that. On the other hand, I'm happy that it fell out like that. Okay, so I'm going to grab this camera. Mind my hand over the lens for a second. Now, focus in. See this arrow? You can see down in there. See that little notch? If we look around all of the rest of it, there's no other notches. So it's important when we go to put this all back together, that arrow lines up with that notch. I'm sure there's someone out there that would be able to tell me exactly why. I'm not 100% why, but I know it's very important. So let's put you back. And I'll probably edit out the part of putting it back on the stand. There we go. All right. I'm not sure exactly what that was that just fell out like that. I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, there's three little springs. Yeah, let me find the other two and put them out. I will go fishing for that other one later. Now, that's it. I want to take this centre part out and not the plates yet. Okay. So we'll put this over here. I've got a nice super clean rag here that I'm putting all this stuff on. Plates. Now, I've been told lots of different ways to do this. Um, the most important things you've got to remember that it's going to go friction plate, steel plate, friction plate, steel plate. And make sure that it's in the same order of what it's in there now. So what I plan to do is I'm going to go and get a piece of cardboard because I'm not keeping these plates, so I don't mind about if they get dirty. And I'm going to put them out and put them face down as they are in there. So when I go to put the new ones in, I have something to actually gauge off. Um, again, I'm videoing it, so if I stuff up, I've got a way to go back and check what it is that I should have done. So I'm going to pause you guys. And I'm going to go and get myself set up to start taking these plates out. And then we can start putting things back together again. Hey, okay. okay, let's go. So we have a friction plate first. Steel plate. Can we see this? Yep. Okay, so the last one, friction. She all looks pretty clean. So I'm going to take these away. I'm going to go and get my new plates and start putting new plates on. Fantastic. Okay, so ready to start putting in the new plates. Um, I actually just 
took my own advice and I remember from uh, some information that I was told by uh, Yuri Mechanical is to make sure that the final friction plate doesn't go into the same grooves as all the rest of them, they go into this one. And I couldn't and I didn't look at it when I was taking it apart to make sure of where I was going. So I just rewound the video and had a look and seen that that is in fact the case. So that is why it's good to video if you can um, or take pictures continuously as you go. But video is great because if I hadn't taken a photo of that pinnacle moment when I was taking that first plate off, I wouldn't have been able to tell. So let's go. Now, the old one showed us it was a friction plate first and then steel friction, steel friction. So. It gave me a heart attack moment for there. I didn't think it was going to fit. Okay. Pass steel. And these by mass, this should be, and it is, the last friction plate. And dip your fingers right down deep in that oil. Okay, so all of them have gone on the long notch. This last friction plate is going to go into the short notch. Okay, just going to let that drain for a minute and go and get the rag that I forgot to bring over. So, yeah, make sure you got enough rags with you. I've got one clean finger here, so I'm going to press stop on the camera and clear away this excess oil, and then we will start putting some stuff back together again. Okay, so I've got all of my new stuff and I'm pleasantly surprised when I've opened up the CNC Racing Pressure Plate, it already has a bearing in it ready to go. So we didn't even have to worry about that one being pulled out. I'm glad that I didn't go to a lot of trouble trying to get that one out before I noticed that this one was in here. Um, it does look like I still need the pin out of this one to go into this one. But I can tell you what, the weight difference between the OEM and the CNC racing is huge. So that's going to make a huge difference. And then I've got all of my new springs, which the old springs look pretty good. I'm still going to change it while I'm in here. Let's change it. And then instead of the little silver washers that we've got here, I've got these new caps um, that just are going to be for looks, really. That's all they're there for. So... The, um, I fished out this spring that I managed to drop in the oil. Let's get this rod out. I have to work that out in order to get the rod into there. Okay. I'll have to come back to you because I'm not sure how to get this one out. It doesn't look like it's very um, ready to come out whatsoever. Okay. Okay, that just took me half an hour. So... Um, what ended up happening is the little rod, this little rod that was in the old bearing, did not want to come out at all. I tried first using a socket that was the same size as or a little bit smaller than the actual head of the pin. And I put it in a vise and tried tapping it with a cloth over it and it just wasn't budging. Um, I did a phone a friend. Um, and they said to make sure that I checked to see if there was any little nuts or bolts or anything that might have been holding it, which wasn't. So I saw it online and when I was doing research for this job, that if you heat up the bearing, that you'll be able to get things out better. So I don't have a heat gun. I've got nothing fancy. I just went and got the good old hair dryer, heated it up until I could almost not touch it and then tried the same again. So it was just a little socket over the edge. I put it on a um, vise that held it gently with lots of cloths. Tap, tap, tap with this big fella and she's popped out and I quickly tapped it into here before it cooled down. So we're back in the business. Um, yeah, <laughs> but that's all part of it is learning and that's what I'm hoping that by doing this little video for uh, you guys that are going to look at it and perhaps use it that 
you can see that you've just got to troubleshoot as you go. You're not going to have all the answers and it's certainly not going to go smooth the whole time. So, the last friction plate is in the small notch, not the long notch. Okay. Ah, these three little itty bitty springs. There's three little notches. I'm going to grab this again. So you can see in here, there's one, there's two, and there's three. Those are holes, and these are actual notches. That's what the springs were sitting on. I know that because I look back through my video. So I'll put these on first, very gently, so they don't move. Okay. Let me just make that camera a bit straighter. Next. Is this guy now i'm going to need two hands for this so let me just pop you back on my handy little camera tripod Oop. and it will be these moments that i will probably edit out you see okay this guy now remember find your little notch because things have moved there's my little notch there's my arrow Get it into the first friction plate. Now I did try to get the all of the steel teeth to line up, but obviously I didn't 100% because it's not happy. You just gotta wiggle and shake as you put pressure on it to push it into those teeth. So this might take me a minute. Wiggle, shake, wiggle, shake. And I can see that these springs are meant to sit into some little grooves here when I get there. I've still got my groove lined up. I'm just gonna keep wiggling and shaking. I wanna get these all lined up before I worry about these little springs which are falling out, so I'm gonna pull them out. Because I don't wanna fish them out of the oil again. <laughs> just keep wiggling and shaking. Until we're flush. My arrows lined up with my notch. Oh, there we go. Aha. So you'll know when it's fully flush. Okay. Let me get these. Now I'm going to have to pull it out a little bit to get these springs in. I know that's a little bit of a fiddle, but at least I know that it's all in. I'll just pull a little bit. And it's a case of putting the spring on the notch, pushing it in a little bit and getting it onto the plate. Get in there. There we go. Last one. sure those springs are seated on the little parts that they're meant to be. <sighs> you gotta get it all the way in so it's not flush. So you gotta uh, push until it's all the way in. She's nice and flush. My arrow matches my notch. So that's what I need. Okay. This guy. Uh, there's no real wrong way of getting that guy in. It only fits in one way. Oh, I just found where my old bearing went. So that was the old bearing. It's still actually warm from the hairdryer. And that's the little socket. You can see the socket was just big enough to give it some taps. So I found a few friends. The one that got back to me and gave me some ideas in the end was um, Damien from Yuri Mechanical. He is fantastic. If you want your bike dyno tuned, you go to Yuri. Okay, so new springs. Let me just put this up a little bit. Six new springs. And they've all twisted together. That's 
Okay, so we're packaging that. Okay. Okay, got my new spaces. So the thing I noticed with these spaces, this is the old spring spacer and the cap head, right? So new spring to old spring. Not much difference, just doing pretty good. This to this worried me for a second. Look at the thickness difference. That concerned me for a bit, except this actually disappears inside it, so it sits flush now. So you can see how that sits flush. An old one sat up like that. So it is for looks, but we're going with a clear couch cover. We've got, we've got to make sure that she has some good looks. So put these in, alternating. Okay, so we're going to go from north to south, east to west, alternating as you put them in. And don't tighten them all until you have them all in. Tighten them then afterwards. So, in we go. And the first one I know is going to be a little bit of a push. See, so remember, these are new springs. Do not want to fit in there. New spaces. Okay, so I've just tightened it enough just so it's caught. I'm not going to do it any tighter. I'm going to put them all in and then tighten them alternating with the torque wrench. And I have my manual that tells me what all the torque settings are for my bike. So I'm going to get these all put in. I'll probably speed this up again. So bear with me. Okay, so they're all in. They're all only just tight. I'm going to just tighten them up a little bit. Just a little bit each time. Alternating goes. And then I will go and get my torque wrench as soon as I feel that this has come to a point where it's actually got a bit of pressure. So remember that I actually had to put a bit of an ounce into getting these off. I even had those two that were stuck. So I know that there's going to be some torque on them. I don't have to worry about the torque wrench until I get to that point. I just don't want to put uneven pressure on these guys. Almost flush now with the actual pressure plate. So I'll be getting close. Again, for looks, I'm trying to keep these spaces. They're all facing the same way, but I don't think that's going to be possible when it comes to actually talking in there. Okay, I felt the bottom on that one. That one, the bottom. Okay. Come to the bottom, I'm going to press pause and I'm going to go get my torque wrench. Okay, so I'm ready to keep going. I had to put this a bit together. So when it came in the box, this little part wasn't there. It's all in the diagrams that came with it. This was on very loose, so I tightened that in. 
That is the pressure, oil pressure gauge that um, sensor that I told you guys about before. So I took it off my old one and put it on. I had to put a ring in there, like a, a giant O-ring, then my clear cover, which is on there now, then this one on and those three screws there. And I think that's all I had to do for this guy. So it came with full set of instructions on actual the breakdown on how to do it. Um, now, that's the threshold, so that's go on to that, that will go into there. This one is your so it's good to line things up too, working it out where it all sits, that's where that goes on to. So this O ring would have to go on to this, which has got the old O ring on there currently. So got that one. Now it came with all new pipettes. So um, what I'll be doing is using the ones that I put into my cardboard. It's still a good idea to do that cardboard because if you don't get new ones with your kit, CNC Racing obviously give you everything, but if you don't, then you know where they're going. But I can still use that to measure which length goes into where. So the next part is liquid gasket. I have not played with this stuff before. That one, I'm told by a couple of different mechanics now that the best one is three bond. I couldn't find any three bond. Um, the Permamax, Permatex, Permatex. Permatex is the one that I've got, um, or JB. JB is pretty good too, apparently. So, I was terrible at arts and crafts at school, and I'm probably going to make a giant mess of this. Put this on. And I need to cut the tip off this. So, bear with me. I'm going to go and get... Hey, I almost forgot. Torque wrench time. So... We're going to torque these seven Newton meters. Thank you again, Damien from Yuri Mechanical, for helping me find that. So I've got my wrench set to seven Newton meters. I'm pretty sure. Yes, I do. I'm going to go in alternating crosshair pattern, and you go until you hear it click. Okay, talked. Fantastic. I've never used one of those tools before. It's pretty neat. Right, liquid gasket time. So I've just read up on the instructions on this stuff. It says that as soon as I put it on, I'm going to immediately put it on and finger tight everything. And once it's been finger tighted and made sure that the material or the gasket is actually coming out around the edges, I then have to let it dry for one hour and then tighten it to torque specifications. Then allow 24 hours to cure before I can put oil back in it and refire her up. That's not gonna be frustrating at all, not to fire her straight up, but if that's what we're supposed to do, that's what we're supposed to do. Okay. I've gotta get this stuff carefully around this. Let me just turn that down so you guys can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. And I'm trying to very carefully not touch that clear cover inside. Okay, so before I do that, I've got all my bolts here ready to go. I've got my four long ones of varying lengths. What I might actually do before I start this, I'm going to pause you guys again. And I'm going to swap out in my piece of cardboard each of these. So let's go with... There's all there along with my T handle ready to go. Clear these out of the way just because. Making sure there's no gaps or holes. It's the whole way around. I don't want to have to have a second go at this. 
Okay. Now for moment of truth. Aiming this thing on. Okay, so I'm sorry that I missed the end of all of that for you because my camera actually went flat, my phone went flat. So where I left you off is I had to actually remove the cover off my belt drive in order to get this just to slide straight in nice and neatly with the um, liquid gasket. I made a bit of a mess of it, had to clean it up a little bit, put a little bit more liquid gasket on, line it up and get it on. Then I tightened all of these to just finger tight until you can see the gasket actually start to spill out and I can see all the way around that it's all spilled out. Once that was done, then you've got to wait an hour and then come back and do your torque settings. So it is 10 Newton meters for this particular bike and this particular cover. Always look up your own workshop service manual, find out your own ones, but um, for most Ducati monsters, they're pretty much the same. Don't quote me on that though, check yourself out. So she looks pretty neat. I wanna get this all tightened and then I can't put any fluids in it until 24 hours later, uh, just because of the liquid gasket. So you will join me tomorrow. I will come out and we will fill it with oil and actually have her run. So for now, tighten these until you hear the click. Okay, all done. So we'll just leave it for 24 hours and fill it with oil and actually turn her over. Okay, pack up time.